Hello. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to add a bit of a different face to your household object, the sprite-based face. To learn more about the difference between sprite and morph-based faces, check out our tutorial on morph and sprite animation. To start, I'm going to import in one of our default sprite-based characters here, and go directly into the character composer. Once I'm in the character composer, I'm going to delete my character's body as I'm only going to use the face. Just click on each individual body part and press the delete key. You will see each item disappear from the scene manager at the bottom right. I'll also delete the front and back sections of hair along with the ear and nose as my character won't need those. My next step is to select the face and enter into the sprite editor. I'll select the face sprite, then click replace. Once I've done that, I need to find the item I want to use for my face background, which in this case is going to be this nice teapot. You'll see that because the image is large, it will appear a little larger than the face. If I try to zoom out and scale it, the whole face will scale, which is not what I want. To only change the size of the face, I need to enter the sprite editor once again. You'll see the selection box will now turn green, which means sprite level editing. Then I can resize the face by itself. So because sprite based characters have individual facial sprites, I can change them in and out for other ones which is what I'm going to do with my character's eyes. If I go up to the head area and the eye section at the top, I can see my custom list of eyes. You can purchase these individual eyes in our city marketplace. To replace them, I'll simply double click and they'll appear in place of the old ones. To resize those, I'm not going to go into the sprite editor, but rather resize and reposition each individual eye. This way, all of the other eye expressions in the sprite library will also resize. Sprite level editing will only resize that particular eye expression. I'll also replace the eyebrows here as well. Now if I want to change the color of each individual item, I can do that as well. If I select a teapot, then go into the color editor, you will see the menu come up with some sliders. I can fool around with the various properties such as brightness and hue to get the ideal color that I want. I can also do the same thing for the eyes. You can set each individual eye to different colors if you want, but here I'm just going to match up their property changes and leave them the same. I'll do the same thing with the eyebrows and lips, and when I'm done, I'll simply click Return to Stage at the top left. Make sure to select Yes when prompted to update the items to the stage. Here you can see my sprite-based face doing various facial expressions that come with the built-in sprite library. You can do a wide variety of different faces with over 13 eye expressions and 21 different mouth expressions. However, you'll notice that there is a skin colored fringe on some of the eye expressions. That is the default character skin color and may look a bit weird on different colored faces. You can change this, however, by going back into the character composer. Once I have my eye selected, I'll enter the color editor once again. This time though, I'm going to go up to the little drop down menu and select skin. Now all the color changes will only affect that particular area of the eye. I'm going to use a similar hue to my character's skin, but make the eyelids a bit darker to simulate some eyeshadow. I'll need to change all of the skin's hues for the various eye sprites that show an eyelid. Once I've completed that, I need to once again update my character to stage. Now you'll see the difference with puppeteering results. When my character's eyes close, the eyelid color is a much better match to the character's skin. And that's how you can create your own sprite-based character out of any household object by simply replacing the sprites.